How did life on Earth originate? Modern theorists discuss the primordial soup hypothesis, explaining that gases and UV light um, and lightning, different climatic conditions, um, came together, like all these inorganic um, properties, abiotic properties, came together and formed the first organic molecules. Um, th these conditions um, were obviously very different from what exists today. Um, and modern theory suggests that in addition to this theory that of this primordial soup or this uh, uh, formation of organic mo molecules from inorganic molecules. Um, scientists also add that today, um, perhaps um, complex molecules developed from simple molecules um, in the sense that uh, monomers became polymers and so on and so forth. Also that complex molecules formed metabolic pathways and then eventually uh, one-celled organisms and more complex pathways. Um, all of that said, um, one of the oldest theories of the origins of life on planet Earth is called spontaneous generation. And it is like it sounds. Uh, the idea of spontaneous generation suggests that living things can arise from non-living things. So living things can arise from non-living things, such that mice could perhaps be generated out of grains if left in a corner of a dark room. There were these recipes um, that um, people people created um, hundreds of years ago where they thought, you know, looking at the waters um, and flooding near rivers that frogs would grow out of that muddy water. And so that mud led to frogs. Um, in essence, spontaneous generation is the belief that providing the right conditions, life can just create itself. A few key scientists tested this idea. First, Francesco Reddy. This guy up here. Um, he's an Italian scientist um, who, in 1668, disproved the idea that flies could spontaneously transform um, from rotting meat, as would be suggested by a theory of spontaneous generation. He set up this famous experiment, um, and he he entertained the idea that. Perhaps if the flies were exposed to the meat, they would circle around the top of the flask, but um, he hypothesized that they would not be generated from the meat if the flask was closed. So what he did was he actually is thought of to have the first um, replicable, you know, legitimate sort of scientific um, experiment designed because um, he had uh, a control group, which was the open flask with the meat, uh, maggots being formed um, to determine, uh, you know, that the flies would obviously grow out of these maggots. And then he had one flask with gauze on the top so that flies would be attracted to, to the meat. Um, and then um, one where the the flask was closed. Um, he he proved through this experiment. He had several jars of each um, to to allow for reliability. Um, but he proved that the flies do not arise from meat. That even though this gauze was on top, the flies came in. They deposited their eggs, and their eggs is what is what um, generated new flies, not the actual meat with the, with the items closed. So new flies arose from the gauze simply because the eggs came through. Oh, new flies arose from the flask with the gauze on top because, simply because the eggs came through and dropped down. So this was important work, um, but there was a lot more work to be done because of the idea that um, that microscopic organisms were present, you know, hundreds of years after Reddy. There were microscopes which led to this, I, uh, you know, 
this fact that there were microbes in the air. Um, so he did not account for microbes. And later, we, in another video, we're going to touch upon, you know, who, who investigated and proved that microbes did not just arise spontaneously either. But Reddy, most importantly in summary, um, determined that um, living things arise from other living things.